What's good? What's good? What's good? What is good? This is Raw Truth Media, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Please like and share this video. If you hear the background noise, I have someone fixing my refrigerator right now. So uh, we kept making that fan noise, like a helicopter noise. And so I had to get that rectified. Um, Dennis Thurman. If you haven't heard or if you're stuck out of social media, D Dennis Thurman has left Jackson State to become their new, to become the Colorado's new defensive analyst. And I was hoping that he would come back. I was hoping that he would stay at JSU and develop this team but like aaron sanders pointed out he said dj i think this shows that the new hire will be a big hire it will bring in a bad staff you mean bad and good brother aaron sanders are you being good bad <laughs> but let's talk about it with brett bartle on leaving that was due today he's going to be the wide receivers coach for an analyst for Colorado. And then you got Dennis Thurman, who's leaving as well. He, he said he been good, bad. Oh, I'm about to say, let's make sure the likes are up. Let's make sure to share this video throughout all social media platforms. And if you want to join the stream, the link will be in the bottom. Let me sit right there. Don't be afraid to join a stream. I'll <laughs> give you an opinion. But this just shows you that this hire is going to be the most important hire for Jackson State in a long time. Because you can't do what other HBCUs are doing. So who... I'm going to let y'all know right now, whoever is the head coach, I'm going to trust in A.D. Ashley Robbins, Robinson's vision, first and foremost. So if it is T.C. Taylor, I'm good with it because I, I trust that Ashley has a vision and a plan. But if it's not, this could be a big hire. I would not be surprised if this is a hire that will shock the airwaves and for the Colorado fans, some that may be listening for those who are telling Jackson state fans to move on and they got to just deal with it. Quote unquote, they're going to move on. All right. They're going to move on in, with a new coach. <laughs> they're going to move on with the new direction and identity they're going to move on with a coach who's going to stick with the plan of leveling the playing field just because Deion Sanders is not in Jackson State anymore does not mean the overall mission of leveling the playing field stops it never stops it never stops besides when I'm not trying to go back to the past, but when Deion Sanders talked about leveling the playing field, I don't think he believed in it fully because I always thought leveling the playing field would take about a couple years, not a couple, but a decade. If you do the math. But now we have something going on. And yes, I am live for those who are asking. If you have an opinion, let me know in the comment section. You get you can say who you want as a head coach or the direction of this team. But Dennis Thurman, man, without Dennis Thurman, it's just gonna be tough. So let me get this straight. And I'm not trying to complain. So you so they want Jackson State 
to not get the best coaches left over. So they took all the great coaches from Jackson State. They took Bartolone, number eight offense in the FCS, and then Dennis Thurman. And expect Jackson State to go back to a regularity team. I truly feel that Ashley Robinson is not trying to be complacent with this process of hiring a new head coach. Now, I don't think LaDamian Thomason LT is going to be the head coach. That was a dispute proven because there were rumors about him being on the campus, but that was false. Uh, the picture that was taken, and shout out to Tiger Talk with 1400 Club, they posted it. Um, that picture was at the TCU facility. So LT is not going to be the head coach, or he's not even um, interviewing for that job. So this hire, who who's whoever is the head coach, they got to present to Ashley Robinson a coaching staff that can develop stars. I hope the, the next head coach can find a defensive coordinator that involves pressure in the quarterback, multiple fronts. But I hope the head coach is hired early. Because I don't want to wait until after the celebration bowl. Like Vaughn said, I wish they would hurry up. I'm I'm not trying to wait till after the celebration bowl. When it's all said and done and it's pretty much over. And then recruiting is the next what? Four days? Oh, you done? Wait, let me put it on me. I think they're done with it. I'll be right back. Ooh, man, I'm happy. So I got some good news for myself. My refrigerator is fixed. I know y'all don't want to hear that, but still, all day. And, and tell me if anyone has dealt with this. When the refrigerator is clogged with ice to the fan and it's making like a, like a choppy sound and it's loud, man, I had to hit up maintenance. I said, man, y'all got to fix this. They was talking about wait for tomorrow morning. I, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't wait that long. Let me, let me stay on topic. Shout out to HBCU Bad Talk. Vaughn said, uh, hope it's not Urban Meyer. Oh, heck no. What would he know about coaching the HBCU? Lawrence RBE says, "Raw truth, we are not here for your fridge, man. I, I'm have, I'm, I'm going to celebrate that. I'm not trying to hear no damn uh, fighter jet sound all night. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think it was too. Vaughn probably wasn't defrosting. Let me read some of these comments. Uh, Raw." Cron42 said, who's your top five coaching candidates? Big shoes to fill. Only a handful could fill them. I don't even know who who's fully hiring for. Now, I could go with who I would want. You know, Ed Reed or you could go with Ed Reed if he's hot, if he's if he is interested, of course, or. Marshall Falk, I mentioned his name. If these again, these are coaches who are who have not been reported as interviewing for the job, but coaches that I would like for Jackson State to have. 
Aaron Sanders says HBCUs really go damage in February with recruiting. Dennis Johnson says Prime going to be the head coach and let these other others do their thing, or is he going to tell these coaches how to coach? Man. Cross says part of me thinks they already have a coach in mind because who he is offering all these new recruits. How can you offer these recruits without a coaching staff? It's happened before. But you do have a point. Who knows? Dennis Johnson says, is Prime going to be the head coach and let these others do their thing? You talking about for the Celebration Bowl? Lawrence says, Coach Dennis gone. It's a sign it won't be TC. On another note, Prime did look out for his staff. Now, maybe that's a clue. I don't want to speculate. Maybe that's a clue that it may be a different hire. If you hire, if you take away if you take away some of the, the, the two best coaches besides TC, the two best coaches away instead of just leaving them there just to help out, maybe they are hiring somebody else. Who knows? Let's get it to 50 likes, family. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Aaron Sanders, about February recruiting. But you still want to recruit these athletes early. Maybe to sway them in delaying their commitment. It happens a lot. Nowadays, uh, coaches are trying to, like, if if they're late in the game and recruiting an athlete before the first phase of signing day, they usually try to convince them to sign on February and tell them to take their time. That's the new game now. The new game is telling these uh, talented athletes, hey, I know you're unsure of picking a school. How about you wait until the second phase of signing day? That's what they're doing now. And I'm going to drop a link for anyone that wants to join the stream. Don't be afraid to join the stream. Give your opinion, good or bad, as long as you're being respectful. Uh, Dennis Johnson says, is Prime going to be the head coach and let – I already read that. Uh, Lawrence says, with Coach Dennis gone – Gerald Castello says, TC would be a good choice. Vaughn says, I think TC is going to go with Prime if we don't get a head coach – if he doesn't get a head coaching job, which is why Prime doesn't have receivers – Coach, right now, I, I just read Brett Bartolone was going to be the receivers coach. Let me know if I'm wrong. Gerald says, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah, that's what I heard too. I heard Brett Bartolone is going to be the wide receivers coach. And uh, for that brother, Joey Galloway, how in the hell are you going to go around and say you don't know? anything about Jackson State before Deion Sanders. Did you not know about Walter Payton, Robert Brazil, Lynn Barney, and many others? Did you not know about them? Did you not know about the two first-round picks in 2000? Did you not know that they have more Hall of Famers There any school in Mississippi? See, these these celebrities, they just say bullshit just to say bullshit. I know Prime's y'all boy. And this is not to get on Prime or anything, but really the media has made it worse. The media has not allowed Jackson State fans to move on. How are you going to tell Jack, JSU fans to move on when you're not even letting them do it? And I bet you if the new coach gets hired, this is what they're going to tell Jackson State fans. They're going to tell Jackson State fans, 
and keep bringing up Deion Sanders when they're really trying to move on. See, I see the game within the game. They're not fooling me. They're not fooling me at all of what they're trying to do. But this whole couple of days, this whole week, it's been just buffoonish news every day. Same bullshit. (laughs) But look what he did for you every single time. Tell me if I'm lying or not. Joe says, who the hell is Brett Bartolo? He's an offensive coordinator. Well, was. Now he's going to Colorado. Vaughn says, not Bart shaking my head. I thought he was an analyst. Yeah, he's he's on he's leaving, man. He's going to Colorado. Dang, Primden took all the coaching staff. And San, Sanders says he was JSU's offensive coordinator from Mississippi State, aka uh, Andre Bradford said that they knew what they did. In the NFL, bro, not looking at their college. Roy May says, a black man coaching two universities at the same time. What do you mean by that? You saying that's a positive thing that he's leaving? That Deion Sanders is leaving and going to a PWI? Aaron Sanders says Nevada, but he was with okay. Gerald Castle says Raw, is he any good? Are you talking about Brett Bartolone? Well, Brett Bartolone, if you're talking about him, Brett Bartolone had JSU as the number eight offense in the FCS. Lawrence says Raw Truth, it's how. The game goes. Coach Prime brought a lot of casuals. However, will be new coach be a new coach is going to have a lot to deal with. But the best way to combat that is win. Yeah, as long as you're winning. That's how you quiet the critics and have your team at a at a higher level. Kay Johnson says, Raw, that's not the media's fault. JSU needs to get out in front of this and they are doing a pistol. No, because they have JSU has multiple times tried to defend themselves. Here's the thing. You're not going to defeat uh, the media, the D, especially the Deion Sanders media. There's, there's so much they can do. And that's why there's content creators on YouTube assisting with that, dispelling all uh, the fallacies that are out there. Dennis Collins, peace and blessings, but he says, I think TC will be an assistant on a new culture staff due to being an alumni of the team. I also believe the only reason he's still at the school is because he went there. A lot of things could happen if TC is not, the head coach maybe goes to Colorado if he's not the head coach, or maybe he's an assistant still. I would I would love for TC to be the part of the Jackson State staff, head coach or not. Uh, I think he's very valuable, well respected. I respect him as a coach. I've never met him, but seems like a good guy. Roy May says, I'm just saying. He's coaching two universities at the same time. Let's just hope they win the Celebration Bowl. That would be a bad look if JSU lose a Celebration Bowl. But the only way to shut shut the media up, you got to win the Celebration Bowl so that no one says, well, you, you're not practicing enough. You're not doing this enough. Gilbert Smith says, any idea... The leading candidates are. I wish I knew. I wish I knew, bro. Jordan Haddon, 
What's good, brother? Shout out to Fam You. He says, "Come to the Orange Blossom Class of 2023." I'm actually gonna go. I'm actually gonna go. I always wanted to go to that game. I'm gonna try to go to five HBCU games. Y'all, let me know which games to go to. Andre Bradford says, "If Prime doesn't come to JSU, you don't get kids there." Get it? If he doesn't win, he doesn't get a better job. Aaron Sanders says, if TC doesn't stay, what about the head coach at Valley? He may go to that one. He may go to that job. You never know. Uh, one thing about TC, he has a lot of respect from, from a lot of people. He's going to get a good job. Whether Jackson State hires him or not, uh, he's got to do what's best for him and his family, of course, and I'm sure he would love to coach Jackson State, but he's got to get hired. K. Johnson says, Raw, at this point, what will make JSU fans happy? Well, to be very honest with you, uh, Brother Johnson, the thing that will make Jackson State fans happy is if they hire a head coach. So they can have a glimmer of hope. I know that's tough because they don't even have a coach name. They they didn't even release who are the candidates. So we don't we don't even know the candidates. We don't know who's in the line to be a coach or not. None of that. So. We just, we just got to wait and see. And I, I hate that it's like that, but it, it, when it's things like this out of your control, you just let it is what it is. My dog, uh, Jeff Lightly, <laughs> he had a post. He said, how do you feel about JSU not naming a head coach yet? Early 10 days of signing day. That's a good question. But here's the thing you don't want to work. You don't want Ashley Robinson to rush his decision. Because if he rushes his decision, then he, when you rush any decision, especially a major one, not too many good things happen. So I trust in Ashley Robinson to get the job done. I'm not even worried about that. I just, I just wish the decision was early just to put out because i'm telling you when the decision is made that's going to make news and people are going to talk about it for a while they're going to talk about it till the cows come on they're going to talk they're going to talk about jackson state so much colorado fans will be annoyed Now, Andre believes TC is leaving if he doesn't get the head coaching job. Interesting. Gerald says, Raw, I might be far off, but I seriously think Coach Prime going to create history that have never been seen before. The recruits he's going to get will make them rev relevant again. Uh, let, let me put this in educated terms. Uh, what Deion Sanders could do at Colorado is – like you stated, make them relevant again, but not historic. They have won a national championship. It's been a long time. It's been since 1990, but they have done it before. They produce Hall of Famers. They've done it before. The only thing different is it has a little flavor, flavor with Deion Sanders coaching the team. And yes, if they win again, that's a lot better than being 11 and a one and eleven, but we'll see how many games they win because that schedule is tough as hell. Schedule is very tough. You got TCU starting out, then you got Nebraska, and then your last four games against Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington. That's six tough games. 
and don't and I didn't even say Oregon State, who's a good solid team. But that's yeah, hey, <laughs> I'm telling that schedule tough, man. Woo. Yeah, you get to see the money games now. <laughs> Gerald said that's a serious schedule. That man, I try to tell them, man. They they didn't want to listen. Shout out to my guy, uh, Thunder. Peace and blessings, brother. He said, Colorado 111. You can only go up. Hey, if Colorado wins six games with that tough schedule, the Colorado, <laughs> man, they be jumping for joy. Now, somebody actually got mad because I said I won't be doing no Colorado videos during the season. Getting all in their feelings and stuff. I, I, my allegiance is to HBCUs. It's nothing. It's nothing personal. Now I would be respectful and ask any questions if if you have for Colorado. I would ask the best way I can. But my allegiance is to HBCU swag schools, JSU basketball. Uh, I may talk about other off conference stuff, but that's just like a like if it's big news or something. But that's about it. Yeah, let me check that schedule again. I'm still. Let's see, let me look at the schedule. Oh. 2023 schedule. It's going to be, they're going to be playing at TCU. That's going to get tough for them. Oh, I forgot. Man, shoot. I didn't even say Wash Utah. That's seven tough games. And if anyone wants to join this discussion, here's the link to the comment section. If you want to give back to this channel, anything is welcome. Here's a cash app or super chat. If you have an important question, super chat. Uh, that's for special questions, so we can have a, a, a full dialogue on it. Here's a Streamyard link for anyone that wants to join. If you're new to the channel, please like and share this video to all social media platforms. Curtis Edwards says, "Prime is a winner. He will win lots of games. We'll see." We will see. Uh, I don't think, respectfully, I don't think Jackson State wants anything to do with Colorado. And it's, it's nothing personal. Uh, Brother Creole, I repeat, Jackson State doesn't want anything to do with Colorado. They're not trying to be mean in Colorado. It's just we... A, a lot of African Americans, a lot of our culture, we have this do for self mentality, which is a strong mentality. And Colorado's mission is different from HBCUs and Jackson State's mission. Jackson State's mission is to level the playing field so that all HBCUs can get to a level of self uh, empowerment economically, um, high status for the universities, and create power within the community whereas a pwi in colorado uh they're just doing what other p5 schools are doing so the missions are different from both schools gerald says he's going to usc game now Rotonis Hines says Prime don't want to play HBCUs because of scholarship disadvantage. Well, he always said, in, in fairness, he always said he didn't want to do the money games with FCS schools. Um, in, in the FBS, there's, there's a difference in size, and like you pointed out, scholarships. Andre Bradford says TCU, Utah, USC, and UCLA, if he's two and two in them, Somebody is in trouble. <laughs> trouble, trouble. Oh, someone has 
donated to the cash app shout out he said anonymous you don't want to say your name but here i'm gonna I'm do this for you shout out to jay for the cash app man no doubt Someone said go coach Prime. <laughs> what if he what if he wins six games? How y'all gonna be though? You know what? Some people may be happy with that with Colorado. <laughs> uh, read some more of these comments. Yeah, y'all let's get it to a hundred plus likes, family. Let's share the stream throughout all social media platforms. Big Warm says, are you still going to follow Coach Prime, though? Well, I didn't unfollow him, but I'm interested, uh, respectfully, I'm interested in the progress of HBCUs. Of course, if they're, if if I see a game, I, I, I'll i see how they look like, and but I'm not going to make no videos or anything like that. Now, this was only, quote, unquote, Colorado videos because Dennis Thurman for Jackson State losing Dennis Thurman, that's big news. D did you know what he has done with this defense? Rec uh, leader in sacks, leader in uh, lowest yards given up. This is why the new coaching hire is so important. There's two things for Jackson State that they got to hire and, and replace a new head coach, and a quarterback. A new head coach and a quarterback. That's the most important replacements for JSU. Uh, Roy Tony says, talent-wise, JSU would be good. But next year, the FAMU used to take in the East. I'm not going to say automatically, but FAMU – is the leader as of now because they got the quarterback back, Jeremy Musa. But Jackson State will have talent returning. If anyone thinks that Jackson State's not going to have talent next year, that's that's just – come on, man. If Malachi Wyman stays on this team next year – it, it's going to be like clockwork because he barely played, and you know he's the most talented receiver. Anyone that knows football knows he's the most talented receiver. He's a matchup nightmare. So if you get him starting, that he should be, and if you get Savion, if Savion returns with Malachi Wyman starting, with some of the offensive line returning, y'all, I don't think people realize not everybody's going to Colorado. Right, Road Tony. Not all the not everyone's leaving. I don't know who's been saying, like, and that's why I don't pay attention to media too much. They be saying things that just to, to create shockwaves. If you actually looked at the roster and the depth chart and look who may leave. Even if Travis leaves, you know Shadur is leaving. And let's say a couple players leaving. If you can keep Malachi Wildman, if you can keep uh, Wilkerson with some of the offensive line and some of the returner defensive line and linebackers, and even if you lose three corners, the backup corners are good. I repeat, the backup corners are good. Don't forget, in Dennis Thurman's defense, what did they do? They rotated the defense, the DBs. They rotated the DBs more than anybody. Right, Aaron Sanders? He says JSU's not in no – is not fading in the wind chill, everyone. not Everyone's not leaving. The new coach will take care of it. And guess what? If 10 to 12 players leave out of 65 total,
guess what, what the new coach is going to do in February? The new coach, and if it's a new coach that can recruit, he's going to replace that with talented recruits and portal players. That's what's going to happen. Right, Road Tony Hodge. I I think that uh, I was on a panel with Ken Clark, and shout out to Kobe of the Blitz City Podcast. We talked about it. Everyone's going to be competing for something. Shadir Sanders, he's going to be motivated in the game, believe it or not, because he wants to prove to Colorado fans that he can handle big time football and that he can he's good enough to go to the next level FBS and do his thing. So he's going to want to put a performance. The same thing with Kevin Coleman. I think Kevin Coleman's going to Colorado. I wish he would stay with Jackson State, but I I see him going to Colorado. Yeah, you watched this show. Yeah, that was a good show. So everyone, y'all just gotta chill, man. Jack, it, I've talked to a lot of fans, uh, Grambling, Fam, you. They absolutely believe what I believe that Jackson State will return enough talent. You just gotta find the right head coach and the quarterback. Uh, Jackson State, here, here's something I'm gonna tell you ahead of time. Jackson State's gonna be one of the top destinations for quarterbacks, whether they're not in the portal or not. There may be a quarterback that will enter the portal just to go to Jackson State. Be on the lookout for that. I repeat, there may be a quarterback who hasn't gone to the portal that may think about going to the portal once this new head coach is signed. I'm getting to the good stuff now. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. I pray. I, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm going to pray that Jackson State Hires this new coach. Because that's when, once JSU hires this head, new head coach, that's when the fun begins. It's going to be really fun on these streams. A lot of people talking about just, just woe is me stuff. I'm not trying to talk about that woe is me crap on this channel. Our people deal with a lot of shit uh, away from social media. This is a chance to relax and, and talk about the great things that's going to happen. Tomorrow, uh, I have a special treat for you guys. I'm going to have Joshua Sims, North Carolina Central fan and alum, and he does the HBCU Nightly on the Twitter spaces. That's going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central time. Yeah, but stay tuned on that, man. It's going to be fun. Ocean says, I wish they made it. They had, they, I wish I had the same optimism you have in life. You got to, man. Uh, Anthony King, peace and blessings, my bro brother. He says, I think, Jess, you can find some hidden gems as far as talent and recruitment. Uh, we have a uh, troll here. Michael Good Jr. says, time to be trash again, JSU. You wish. <laughs> if you think JSU is going to be trash, oh, well. i let you think that. i let you think that. Andre Bradford says, but it's for, it's for, it's your best player. It's a problem. The type of kids Prime was getting not going to JSU now. Most of them kids wanted to play for Prime. Let's be honest. Uh, a lot of a lot of athletes, young athletes, when they commit to these schools and commit to the coach. I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get on recruits, but let's be let's let's be. Let's be real now. 
are they really wanting to commit to a school because they like the school, because they like the history of the school, the, the campus? No. Oh, you want me to send you a wrench? Uh, let me uh, hold up real quick, real, real quick. Let me uh, get my other uh, phone device because I can't do it on StreamYard, uh, Aaron Sanders. Let me. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me put this real quick. Y'all, y'all hold up real quick. All right, my, I'm back. So, Aaron, Aaron Sanders, I just gave you a wrench. Who else is gonna get a wrench? Uh, Anthony King, since you are, since you tuned into all the videos, you are now a moderator. Who else I need to put as a moderator? Uh, Andre Bradford says, right, the bell and whistle in the coach, why kids go to Alabama is because of St. Nick. Uh, Michael Groot says, not trolling my guy. This is Raw Truth Media. That uh, that team about to be, about to get stripped like a favorite strip club night. He said, strip like a favorite nightclub dancer. No, I don't think so. The Jackson State will return enough talent to compete. Hey, Anthony King, you know I got to look out for you, bro. You always uh, sharing the video. You always supporting the channel, liking the video. It could be a video that I've never talked about before. He's always in here. He's always supporting. So always, uh, always. Salute to real ones. Ron C says, I knew he would be going up to the mountains. Now, for Dennis Thurman, I'm not fully surprised that he's going to Colorado even to be an analyst. Mainly due to the fact that Dennis Thurman, his origins are from California. And he has family there, so his family is close by. So, so I'm not totally surprised that 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 even happened. Let's get the likes up, family. We should have more than fifty likes. Let's get the likes up to a hundred likes, so we can continue with the stream. Hitting the like button is free. It's no charge at all. Yo, Creel says, it, this is what he, this is his choices. His choices are Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Eric Dickerson, Damian Thomason. Interesting, but are they interested? That's the question. Yeah, hit the like button, man. Let me see what the likes are now. All right. We're at 55 likes. Let's get it to 100. Hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Bro George says, all we got to do next year is win. That's all you got to do, family. Winning takes care of it all. Because when you win, especially when people doubt you or think that you're not going to be as good, 
as you are this past season, that's what's going to happen. But just a hunch, I'm going to make a guess. And I don't know. I don't know who, who's going to be the head coach or anything. I'm just going to make an educated guess. Because I believe the university wants to make a hire. And this is just what I believe. I think they want to make it before Thursday. This coming Thursday. So I say before Thursday. Jackson State would name their new head coach. I know that's a couple days from now, but the days will go by quickly. <laughs> Just enough. Okay, uh, Vaughn says, is Neely going to Colorado? So Neely, he said on this video that he's going to talk about Deion Sanders and Jackson State. Respectfully. I know he's a Jackson State alum. He's been there. He's a true blue guy. I get it. I get it. But I don't know how you're going to have that work when you have the title the, T-H-E-E, pregame show. Now, we all know the word the is Jackson State. Unless you make another channel to talk about Colorado, that's the only way it could work. Now, that's just what I believe, though. Uh, Ron C says, DJ brings that real and true heat. Get the likes up. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, man. I always say this is the people's channel. I'm out here just to talk about sports and having a good time, man. This is a, this is a blessing. Ron C says, we need a good coach to come in because next season starts off with good competition. We got Texas State coming up. Yeah, FBS competition. Man, I wish I wish I would have seen Shadir play against that team, man. I, I wish I would have seen it. I hate that he I'm I, I'm not gonna lie, man. It's I understand why he's leaving because you're not you don't want to leave your father. I understand. But, man, that's tough. I wanted to see Shadir play against that team because I guarantee you if if Jackson State had the full team all together, not if, if Dion was still there, I would have said guaranteed that they would have beat Texas State next year. Now, maybe they could still do it. With this new coaching staff, who knows? But I know for a fact Shadir and company would have been enough to beat Texas State. And there's there's no way someone could tell me otherwise. Now, 45 and 11 says, JSU, y'all still talking about Dion in Colorado. Uh, I don't, I think JSU wants to move on. <laughs> don't blame them that the media is trashing their school's name and the citizens at Jackson every single day. That's not their fault. I'm just keep I, I y'all want the truth. I'm gonna speak that truth. Vaughn says he, says he had the Colorado gear in the latest drop by Will I Media. That's why I asked. Yeah, I seen that. Even if Dion's your boy, I would have never, I wouldn't even filmed it. I would never filmed it. Not right now. Mm-mm. Got to be smarter than that. Now, he's a grown man. He can do whatever he wants, but I wouldn't have done it. Uh, 45 Lewis says, you have the Black National Championship coming up, and you still worried about Dion? Who's worried about Dion? And brother 4511, what did I say that was hating on Dion? 
Now, family, at, answer me this. Did I say anything hating on DR? Or was I just being honest? See, I don't treat human beings like God. I treat everybody equally. Man, woman, children, it doesn't matter. I give you equal energy. And that's the problem. When you tell the truth about something and you examine a situation, everyone's too emotional. In this stream, we were talking about absolute, like Aaron Sanders says, we was talking about everything. We was talking about scenarios uh, of Jackson State, why this head coaching position is so important. You just lost Dennis Thurman, and you just lost Brett Bartolome. And that you got to make sure this hire is spot on. So what does that have to do with Deion Sanders or anyone hating on Deion Sanders? Donna Harris was right. Nothing was said hating on Deion. Now, one time. When I mentioned the schedule, because there was a Colorado fan that asked about next year's schedule. And they said, how many wins can Dion get? I, I gave the honest answer and said they'll be lucky to get six. And I read off the names. TCU, Nebraska, Utah, Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington State. So that's a tough schedule. Where's the lie in that? If you can win six games with that schedule, that's better than one of 11. I said that. Uh, countdown timer says Neely living dangerously. Now he's going back to Jackson after filming Coach Prime in Colorado. Oh, man. The optics are just bad. And I'm not trying to, you know me, you know how I do. I don't, I don't shit on people. Uh, I'm all about peace. But if someone's mad about Neely doing that, that's, that's what everything's going on. That's just bad timing. Yeah, it got to be like Rob J. Rob J. smooth with it. <laughs> if Rob J. would have went to Colorado, you won't see him with all that Colorado gear. You see him just chilling with Coach Prime. Uh, yo, Creole says, DNVR Sports has mentioned on several occasions that their subscribers have skyrocketed. They even had Rob J. on their stream. I love your stream, but it's time to level up. What do you mean, I love your stream, it's time to level up? So are you telling me I got to be like those Anglo-Saxon Colorado fans in the DNVR sports? Is that what you're saying? Yo, Creole, I believe. Are you, yo, Creole, are, are, I believe. I have a question, my brother. Are you a Jackson State fan or a Dion fan? I, I, I want to ask there, are you a, are you a Jackson State fan or are you an HBCU fan or, or a Dion fan? Ron C says, DJ, I got a question. How is Dion Sanders wearing Nike instead of Under Armour? That's a good question. Um, really just contracts. So Colorado – is with Nike until 2024. And I'm sure that the school worked to deal with Dion and Dion worked to deal with Under Armour. And it happens more times than you think. And they had to be compromised because there was no way that Colorado was going to get out of their contract early, especially with Nike that has a lot of dough. Countdown timer says I'm a Coach Prime fan. Well, at least at least countdown timer is being honest. 
I, re I respect honesty. If you're honest and you tell me your intentions, I'm not going to say anything bad about you. I won't do it anyway. But I, I, I just don't want people around just fence jumping. Shout out to HBC Overdrive with Doc Holiday. He said, what a dude, bro. Make sure to subscribe to his channel, man. Uh, the Cut 2009 says, let's be honest, the whole pregame show was created for Deion Sanders being there. Even, even if so, the name, the T-H-E-E -E pregame show, that's, that's a Jackson State name through and through. All I'm saying is you just got to be smoother than that. Of course you're going to see Deion Sanders because they, they're homies. I got no problem with that. I don't think anyone has a problem with that. You just got to be smarter. I'm going to send a link out right now for anyone that wants to join to talk about uh, this main topic here of Dennis Thurman and Brett Bartolome leaving and what Jackson State got to do, what they got, what they got to do to capture the moment uh, to to really go to the next phase of their future. Ron C says, "Right, my school is the I love." So when you know the and I love or really just the word T-H-E-E, -E, that you're thinking about Jackson State. When Ohio State says the Ohio State, they don't use two E's. I want to say shout out to my brother, HVC Overdrive. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. He's online right now. What's, how you doing, my brother? Man, I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm ready for some football. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for all. I'm ready for all of it, man. Football, coach being name. I hope it's before Thursday. It has to be. You got to. I, I feel like we need to kind of stop this little premature bleeding that we have right now to, uh -huh. you know, to name a coach. Uh, that way, like I said, that way we can kind of secure some of these uh, uh, recruits and prospects that we have. And don't get me wrong, Coach O, Coach uh, uh, TC, hey, they've been doing a marvelous job. Yeah, they're trying recruits. to make sure oh. that 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 they keep these recruits, and you know what I'm saying, and, and they, um, and not just you know what I'm saying, not um, trying to you know just basically stopping the 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 flood the floodgates opening. Now, the best thing about this is is that. With the recruiting, is that he commit that TC is recruiting back into the local, back to the state. Mm -hmm. uh, now we we still need to get some some other recruits in, as far as from from out of state, and you know different places and stuff like that. We still need to look into the transfer portal because you want to go ahead and kind of keep the same momentum that you got going on right now. That's the main thing we that's the main thing like we really need right now is to keep the same, you know, just to maintain that that pace that we have. And then whenever we get the new head coach come in, uh like I said, shit ain't gonna stop. <laughs> no, nah, they you know? they they pray they praying that this this stuff stop, bro. <laughs> they pray. I yeah, I was like, telling them. So hypothetically, bro, how many players they expected to miss? Ten or twelve players out of sixty-five. You could replace them with high three stars or four stars mm -hmm. if it gets there. And transfer yeah. portal players. And Man. then still develop, and then still develop your 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 high school talent. Exactly, because your high school talent is the one that's going to actually take you a little bit further. Because the transfer portal is kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a, a stock gap. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Uh, and the re you know, people say, well, uh, well, this guy came from this school. He played at such such school. Okay, how many years do he got left? Uh, how many years do he have left? Um, do he have left at said school? If he had like three or four years left. But he don't have no type of tape, or he didn't play any type of games. Then why would I want to? Why would I want to latch on to that type of player? To because I don't know what you you know what I'm saying I don't know what you made of. 
Right. And then two, let's just say you leaving the school because well you ain't getting no playing time. Okay, so is that an indictment on the school, on the coaching staff, or is that an indictment on you? Is that the saying like, well, you got you know what I'm saying? You you, you might need to get back into the lab <laughs> and, and, and and try to get better. No, no doubt, man. And, and I was mentioning this earlier, uh, Doc, that when the coach gets hired, I believe that Jackson State will have a pick of the litter of the players they want, like the quarterbacks they want. Yeah. You, you never know. They may be a, a, a talented quarterback that will enter the portal when they find out, okay, there's a new head coach, and maybe I could play for Jackson State would, that would have enough talent. Because even with the losses, if anything, Jackson State is like last year's Jackson State team, which was 11-2. and two. Mm-hmm. This Jackson State team this year is with the new additions added to some of last year's team. Right. But some, you, I mean, yeah. he has some new toys to play with, though. You know what I'm saying? When he, when he for this year, he has new toys to play with. But see, the thing about it is, for us, like, if you was a trans, if you a quarterback that had probably like four years left, hey, you weren't playing because Shadur had that had the position on lock. You yeah. was not playing, and then did, here's my whole thing. So let's just say Coach Prime did stay, right? At the Shadur Lake, at the Shadur Leagues, I want to see how you be able to actually develop, a, you know what I'm saying? Actually develop a true quarterback that's not your son. It's going to be open competition. That's how they're going to get the quarterback. You tell, you recruit a quarterback and say, hey, we don't, we didn't name a starter. It's an open position. That's intriguing. Your door ain't there no more. So yeah, yeah. you gotta come with it. And, and you gotta realize too, like when you when you going out for that for that spot, you got a dude that actually played quarterback on that's on your coaching staff. TC played quarterback before he switched over to wide receiver. Yeah, I remember that. So so it's the, the the you can pick up some things from him, man, and then learn the offense, learn learn the offense, and you know what I'm saying. Just be out there and be a sponge. That's all you need to do. Um, I see your thing, but you know, as far as with Dennis Thurman, I congratulate Dennis Thurman for 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 getting that pay raise at Colorado. Um, most of the coaches that he took, you know, that he got with him, um, uh, that was on the staff at Jackson State, and then he, the one he took, um, he took Coach Dancy from Valley. I, I congratulate them. I don't hate on them. I don't. I not no hate on them whatsoever because, you know, it's things that that, you know, it might be a big big thing for them but here's the thing bro um but people don't realize dancy's situation is different from dion's yeah dancy was playing on losing te- was coaching the losing team they only won two games right and this plus dancy was just dancy wasn't parading around i say this respectfully Dancy wasn't parading around like he was the HBCU savior. He wasn't saying things that would rile up people if he did something different. That's true. So that's why people weren't really mad at him. And I saw people online was trying to compare Coach Dancy with leaving with Deion Sanders. That's not true at all. No, you Uh, can't do that. Yeah, Dancy leaving when he could have been fired. The next year, because they had a losing season with bad resources, this is a good security move. He gets that's paid that's more, it. and he doesn't have to worry about getting fired. These that's two it. moves are not the same at all, right? Keisha already knows. She said facts. 
These are not the same moves. Hey, you talking about Coach Dancy, man, that was at Valley for like five, five, six years. Right. With the most limited of resources. And people talking about how Jackson State was, talking about with all resources and stuff. You talking about Coach Dancy down there, you know, at Valley, at Itabina. Ain't nothing out there. With the resources <laughs> that he had, like, bro, he, man, like, bro, he, he, he had nothing out there. And we like, got, uh, not- hey, bro, we got a, uh, we got Monty in the building. What's good, brother? Are you on? Uh, I don't yeah, we we have someone here, Monty. Can you hear me? I think I hear you. Yeah, we'll we'll keep going unless she comes back on. But yeah, my thing about this is, man, you talking about dancing didn't have no type of resources whatsoever, man. Like he had to make, he had to turn, you know what I'm saying? He had to do stuff, you know, turn them out, you know, create stuff out mountain out of a molehill, bro. Like but the thing about but see here's the thing though, and I'm not saying that coach Coach Pine, the, the kids for Coach Pine didn't play for him. They didn't play hard for him. Coach Dancy, all his kids played hard for him. Like, he gave them somewhat, some, some sort of hope that they could actually, you know what I'm saying, that they could actually go out there and do it. He did, man. He, he, he had them believe. The fact that this Valley team this year had two wins is remarkable. Yeah, because they were on the verge not winning a damn thing, and and that's how much Van- Dancy had them believing. But uh, shout out to Tamar Leader Sports Network. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. He said, "What's good, DJ and chat? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings to you, OG. Uh, I saw your video today about that quarterback, Philip Short. That was excellent, man. Uh, you you heard about that quarterback they offered, uh, Doc? Oh yeah, I heard about him. He got a yeah. nice arm on him." Yeah, that'll be a good get. And I would like for Jackson State to continue the trend of getting a pocket pass a quarterback. Well, a quarterback who's a little bit balanced. Someone that's not just running to be running all on, on the first option. <laughs> it's always good to have a quarterback that can make at least three reads. Especially if you got a quarterback that don't that can't see over your damn offensive line and <laughs> only make one read. It'll be a long day. So there's seven undefeated teams left. Jackson State, Georgia, Mississippi, and some D two, D two, D three, D two schools as well. Because Holy Cross lost. And I, uh, that was the only time I was rooting for a normal PWI FCS school. State loss too, man. Yeah, man. They, I think that culture news got got they got distracted by that culture news. I think something was off. Now, Incarnate Word is the talented team, but Sacramento State, I thought, I thought they should have won. Yeah, they should have won that game, but man, it was a it was a barn burner for that one. A lot of points in that game, man. <laughs> a lot of points, man. All right, I think he's back on. Are you there, Monty? Yep, I'm here. Sorry about that. No, no, you good, my brother. You good, man. How's it going? Great, great show tonight, as oh, always. Thanks, man. This is a. Uh... I actually had fun with this this stream. I know I'm, I know there's not really a much going around. Everybody's just waiting to hear it, the new head coach of Jackson State. I pray it's tomorrow, but I don't think it, it's even going to be tomorrow. It's going to be, I'll tell you, when they announce this new head coach, it's going to be when it's least expected. So, So here's the thing. You know, once again, even with this whole Dion thing, we when we had an opportunity to shine and take advantage, we not. 
Um, this would be the time while everybody is talking about Jackson State, good or bad, those that's, you know, mad that Coach Prime left, um, things of that nature. You know, you have the opportunity when you have, you know, the media attention on you. I think if I'm a Jackson State alum, a student and, and, and real fan of Jackson State, what I would be doing is challenging those that said that they were supporting Jackson State and what Dion was doing. And so here, here's time to hold their feet to the fire. Were you all here because of Dion or you here and what he said as well? Is these, is these um, sponsorships going to go away? Um, where's Diddy in the million dollars he promised? I mean, hell, maybe if Jackson State had got that million from, D, from Diddy, they could have did something, you know, with that, you know. But I, I hear nobody talking about that. And that man went on national TV in front of a war show and promised money to Jackson State and to his alma mater, Howard University. And I haven't heard anything about that. Even saying, you know, on social media, like, hey, man, you, you said you wanted to su support our people and you was dropping a million, which you easily can, you know, but that never happened. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's what you're saying from these celebrities and entertainers, just anybody that's famous, they've been all talk. They've been all talk. I, I think Diddy had a bunch of Hennessy or something and just like, hey, I'm going to give a million dollars. <laughs> now, Charles Barkley, even though I disagree with who – his talking points, he did actually donate a million dollars to Jackson State. I think it was yesterday. So kudos to him. It was true. He did give a, a million to Jackson State. But we need more of our influence, brothers and sisters in our community, uh, to give. And you know what's crazy? All these celebrities were at the Jackson State games. What did they give? To J JSU? That's the question. Yeah, that I mean that's that's a good question, but you know, so here's my thing. I'm 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 a H I'm a HBCU alum. I didn't attend Jackson State. Um, I was a coach prime like many of you are growing up, and um, I was a Jackson State fan because I'm I'm a I'm a band head. So I I played in the H HBCU band. My mentor, um, my first trip out of Detroit was down to Jackson State because my mentor played in the boom and a lot of people from Detroit um, have attended Jackson State, including a lot of my friends. But I'm also a football guy. So it was a win-win for Dion going there because I was a fan of Dion and I've always liked Jackson State, you know, especially Hall of Famer Lynn Barney right here out of Detroit. I've talked to him numerous times, you know, being a um, Detroit Lion Hall of Famer as well as the um, Jackson State alum. Um, when I look at this whole situation, um, one of the things when you look at our, our people over, over history, when there's one person in charge of something of a movement, if you take that one out, then the movement dies. When you think how successful this whole, like the whole Black Lives Matter was moving around the country, because it wasn't one single person that they were able to pinpoint and try to take out. You have multiple people, you know, whether you like the organization or not. And even with trying to level this playing field, it was going to take more than Dion. I think he probably came with the, with the right intentions, but it's still a whole lot. And we talk about football, you know, our HBCUs do not put money into the football program because we're not lovers of football like we say we are. We love the bands, mm. and I can contribute to that. But when it comes to football versus the PWIs, like I, I live up here in Michigan. I'm about 15 minutes from the University of Michigan. The University of Michigan football program is about a $200, $200 million budget <laughs> for 2022. That's just the football program. Now, what keeps these schools going? They have boosters and things of that nature because these schools know a lot of the money from the football programs that generate the University of Michigan, the Michigan State, the Ohio State, they pretty much carry the whole athletic program budget. So 
we don't have to raise money, you know, for the soccer team or the baseball team because, like I said, perfect example, University of Michigan, between their football program and the University of Michigan basketball program, those two sports can carry that whole university sports thing, and, and they have more than the money than they need. They have all the access to the facilities and things of that nature, you know. And, you know, the money that was coming in through this fame, through this undefeated seasons, two, two years in a row, basically, you know, once the money coming in, we have to do better of how we're going to manage the money and of putting money back into the program. Now, if it's true, hearing about money from the Celebration Bowl not going part into the football program and you there because of the football team, you know, that, that, that would be, that's wrong. That would be poor management because all these other schools is going into these bowl games, their football program is going to see the majority of that money. That way they can continue doing what they need to do for the next season, for the next year. You know what I mean? Spot on, man. You, Hey man, I'm glad I gave you the floor, man. You, <laughs> you put, you put a, a full perspective on it. Uh, doc, man, uh, what do you have to say about that, my brother? Is he back on? Doc? Oh, he'd be back on. Uh and, and I wanna and I wanna be clear. I mean, like I said, the eyes did come to Jackson State. I mean, I I watched every yeah. last Jackson State game. Yeah, we can hear you, Doc. Uh, after Monty Monty finishes, we're gonna go to you. No, you, you go ahead. Go ahead and go to Doc. I'm good. Okay, man. Doc, you, you still there? I think you're driving this car. Uh, Coach Walker says the big house seats over 105,000 fans. Mm. Talking about Michigan. Uh, Art Meredith says it takes a village to raise a child. And I think you're just talking about um, to level, like what Monty said, to level the playing field. It's not just one person, like he stated. Uh, it takes a collective unit. I've already mentioned that it takes double-digit years, more than 10, to truly level a playing field. I think Dion knew that. Um, I've I've been on countless of streams. Now, I know this is a dead horse of me bringing it up, but I, I truly believe that Dion left Jackson because he always wanted to go to the FBS. I don't think it was because he wasn't paid enough or anything. I think he had his mind made up. Look at the recruiting numbers. That should tell you everything. Four players this whole fall. You know damn well that Jack uh, that Dion Sanders, since he's been a Jackson, has always cleaned house in the fall season there was no recruiting news barely little there was no activity in it and and don't forget the president of colorado said that he spoke with dion october 2nd so that should tell you something doc you back yeah man my bad i i, I was in the car man i was on my way from here out to work but Nah, I, I heard about that, man. But, you know, like, it's a little innuendo when you have to talk about that. The thing about it is, is that uh, they've been in the talks with – they've been in the talks with Coach Prime since, since October the 2nd. They fired Carl Durrell, I think, that – think a couple of days afterwards. So they already knew what 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 which way they were going from the jump. They knew what they they were doing from the jump. Uh, we have uh, D. Hadler says that the new coach should cut off all access. Okay, said uh, Dion invited everybody, thinking it was a good thing until it wasn't. Hmm. Now, now, now here's some more inside um, raw truth because, like I said, I, I, I've been covering everything Jackson as well as I've been covering. Um, Colorado and what's been going on there. So, so here's the thing. The Pac-12 have not had not signed a new media contract for TV because 
they made this decision months ago that we need to go after Coach Prime. And here's the thing: when you do have a good, when you do have a good coach in place, I think this is the first time Jackson been in a position where you have a, a coach that's so good and so dominating that you're not expecting for schools to come after them. And in college football, it happens. Hell, Nick Saban was at Michigan State. I should be bad. Miss, Miss, you know, why Nick Saban ended up going to Alabama? He was at Michigan State at one time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, but the thing about it is this is what happens when you do perform at these coaching levels. When you, when you are really impacting your program, everybody wants you. Just think about how many teams would have wanted Phil Jackson you know, all them years that the Bulls had him. And then guess what? When Michael Jordan left Chicago, who got Phil? The Lakers got Phil after that for Shaq and Kobe. So when you do have a, a prime time coach, no pun intended, and you're winning, because if, if, if Dion had the same record that Eddie George got right now, we wouldn't be talking about him. But the fact is he came in, for me, because he came in and he won so fast, I mean, damn, it would have been boring just to see who's going to be second in the swag. Because he would have won again next year. I mean, think about it. Outside of the spring, COVID, which we can't even count that, and any of them teams that count that, they counted him, and he hadn't even had Shadur in place and none of the other player transfers in. That's the last time that anybody in the swag beat Jackson State. And, and, to years on, ago. and to add on what you're saying, Monty, uh, if you look at Deion Sanders' track record on any profession, he never stays too long. The Falcons, what, four years? The, the, Falcons, the, the, the Falcons didn't renew his contract. They right. let him go. They let him go. The 49ers, one year. And, and, and Jerry Jones pulled out that checkbook and uh-huh. said, you know, we need to win a Super Bowl, which is which is the last time they won. And we need Deion Sanders because Trey Aikman, Deion Sanders was shutting down the whole field. I mean, the, the man is gifted, you know, from what his 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 talents on the field. But but here's the thing where I would say where I see some good coming out of the Colorado thing. Some of the brothers, if he goes to Colorado and shows out in the Pac twelve, which I think he will because all signs was pointing that way. Now you start developing a coaching tree where they're going to start coming and poaching, poaching his staff as well. You know, but, you know, him having to come, yes, he needed Jackson State. Jackson State needed him. But as a black man, the goalpost is always moving because, you know, here it is. This man was considered the great, one of the greatest Hall of Fame players. You know, outside of Tom Brady, who, you know, who got all the rings, we were talking to Deion Sanders for years in, in most conversations. He was always top, top two players to ever play the game. And folks said, well, you need to coach at, the, you know, you need to coach at high school first. Well, he won, he coached at high school. He won four state championships in Texas. Okay. You still can't go straight to a, a top program. Meanwhile, um, I think it's Trent Dilfer, or one of the one of the um, quarterbacks, the white guy. He just went from high school. He just went to a to a top program with no experience. So, you know, the goalposts is always move when it comes down to a brother trying to get in these positions. And when you know football, you know football. And and I think that was just some BS as well. The hoops that he did have to jump through, you know, um, you know, as far as you know, you got to go through the ranks or whatever, because every every everybody don't. No, you, you ain't lying on that. Uh, Coach Walker says, "Would that be tampering?" Just asking. He, he was talking about what, what that count will be tampering in in a sense because Coach Prime was still on the contract. Coach Durrell is still on the contract with 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 Colorado, so that was that is kind of tampering. It, it is, I ain't gonna hold you. It is, but it since, is. It's, it, since it's the FBS, they're not gonna, there's nothing gonna happen at all. <laughs> it, it is messed up, though. 
And here's the other thing. So, like I said, Colorado, they are waiting. Their commissioner said they are waiting to see if they was going to be able to get Coach Prime because now they, they're signing that TV contract. And that's why the athletes were saying, you know, we don't got the money yet, but we're going to get it because they're going to get the money the same way a lot of the attention was brought to the SWAC this year with Coach Prime. The Pac-12 already got money, so they're getting, a, they're getting an even bigger media deal. The other thing, on top of the portal that started last Monday, when you go on Colorado website, I just did my own little investigative reporting, the release of their season tickets was released on Monday, and it closed by Wednesday. Matter of fact, if you go on their website right now to inquire about tickets, they are actually – having you fill out a form and they already said that they received over 2000 interest forms in tickets and the, the tickets for the public don't even go on sale until like May of next year. So why, you know, as I you know, use the term as, as, as you playing checkers, somebody else is playing chess. Mm -hmm. So they set all this up for that PAC 12 TV deal to make sure they're going to get coach prime or not. Season ticket release and the portal. And another thing that Colorado did that nobody's talking about, that they actually changed the educational standards in, to, to allow general studies majors into their program because Colorado is a, is, a, is, a, is a high academic school and it was actually a university that was hard. One of the things that was hindering them of getting certain players, it was hard getting into the university and transferring credits because it was something about they didn't have a general studies major and now they do because you know most of these guys just uh, let's be honest they're not going to college and trying to get the degree if they really you know aspirations for the for the nfl they in some type of bs major and it seems to me from my perspective colorado didn't have that and now they do and that's allowing that's that's allowing a, a lot of other transfers to, to jump on board to them now, I can say this, man, um, I can only see it for right now. The they'll, They they probably will, in his first season, they'll probably go at least eight and four. I would say uh, that's, a, that's a little bit too nice, man. Uh, it's been nice, but what I'm saying is, the reason why I'm saying it, though, it, 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 y'all just hear me out. This is the reason why I'm saying it, because they still have to deal with USC. Uh, and especially if Caleb Williams come back, they have to deal with that guy right there. They still got to deal with UCLA and Chip Kelly and his offense. They have to deal with a reemerging Washington team that has a hell of a quarterback in Penix Jr. They have to deal with, of course, you're going to have to deal with Oregon with that team speed. And you know what I'm saying? Especially if they have to go to Oregon, that place is, you know, that place is loud as hell. And you know, finally, they probably they 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 might. Uh, I don't know. They could get by Utah. Uh, Utah has a good defense. I want to say let's say let me take that eight four back. I would probably say let's say six and six. Okay, that's what that was my original prediction <laughs> a couple days ago. So yeah, that's more believable than eight and four. That that schedule's tough as hell, man. Yeah, and then they say B first say they got to deal with TCU. Yeah, like the the thing about it is, we, it's that conference right now until USC and UCLA get back, get you know go to the Big Ten, it's still going to be loaded. You still going your your top your top heavy teams are basically Utah, Oregon, Washington, uh, UCLA, USC, um. Coach Simmons and, got the list right here. TCU, Nebraska, USC, Oregon State, Oregon, UCLA, Utah, and, and Washington. Washington. Remember, Oregon State is good this year. Oh, yeah, they are good. So let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's eight good teams. So really, one, two. So you have two top – no, you have three top-tier teams. Then you have – two very good teams. And then you have another two just emerging good. So I'm about to say UCLA, USC, and Utah pretty much 
damn near run the Pac-12. Yeah. Oregon, Oregon is that slight, slight second because you you never know what type of team they will have. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can have a they can have a all that explosive passing team, or they can run you to death with RPO. That Oregon State team, man, they they're physical, man. I've seen them play because you know Pac-12 played a late night. They're very physical, just like Utah. Utah is a physical team. Utah is the most physical team in the Pac-12. They don't get a bunch of four or five stars, but they play like it. <laughs> they well coached too. And they well coached. That defense is 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 killer because hey, they they played Colorado the last game of the season. They beat them by 42, 63 to 21, y'all. 63 to 21. Just think about that. We talking about Utah. And then Utah goes in and the, the following week and destroys USC in the Pac 12 game, <laughs> in the Pac 12 championship game. Hey, Doc Monty, man, I, I've been wanting to tell y'all this, man. This is the, this is the funny part in a sad way. Today, Fox Sports announced that Shadur, they got Shadur top top of the race of the Heisman next year. Funny. So when Shadur was playing for HBCU, Jackson State, they weren't really singing his praises to be a Heisman. Now that he's with Colorado, they're saying he's in contention to be a Heisman, even though he has not played in the FBS yet. Monty, what you think about that, brother? And then we'll go with Doc. I mean, so once again, that's one that's one of the things I think behind the scenes, once Coach Prime is there, you you know, you realize it as much as you you trying to sound the alarm until our people really pull our money together. Martin Luther King made this quote. He said, Black people individually, we broke. But collectively, we have the highest economic power. And so unless the SWAC and HBCUs would have created their own network, like I have the Big Ten up here and all of that, so we can really control and get that money from the TV deals. And the thing about it is you don't even need um, TV anymore when you have streaming. And when I look and follow up the SWAC and the SWAC and listening to questions asked to the SWAC commissioner trying to get that, we don't want to touch that. But yet everybody don't have cable TV, but everybody has a phone. You know, we, we talking about this, all of the all of the talk regarding Coach Prime has all been over the Internet, which everybody who everybody's on right now. This this topic is on <laughs> about 20 different channels and everybody got, you know, couple hundred to a couple thousand people on this you know um so i'm not surprised because yeah now that he's in a different conference you know unfortunately well if he goes there and, and shows out you know and, and my thing is we didn't really expect Dion to to do this well this fast in the swag but he did now looking at what he's lining up in colorado he He's getting some dogs right now, and he's actually able to get the coaches. Um, I, I follow Mac football. The, the the offensive coordinator he got from Kent State and got him to come, and that 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 guy was already making a half a million as a coach up here in the Mac. I know you and saw that got, Kent State Georgia game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and so and so this and so this guy has been raised. You know, he had top 30 offense in the country, and then he don't have a quarterback anymore. So, you know, I don't know who put that book in Dion here to get that guy, but they about to pay him. They about to, He's about to make at least 750 to a million and team him up with Shadour because when you look at the receivers and what Colorado is building, it's about to be a straight air attack because it's going to be super fast. Now, now my thing is I'm, going, I'm concerned – is how Shadur is going to handle the noise because of the HBCU games. Unfortunately, we don't let the band play during this, that, and the other, which is a whole bunch of garbage. It's not football because when you come to the big house, that 106,000 is screaming all damn game. 
ain't no quiet down the crowd. You got to get used to that. You got to go to, you know, a silent count and all that other stuff. So that's what I'm going to be interested in seeing how, how Shadur is going to um, adjust just with that. Right on. And, and before we go on, because this is this is really heating up. This is a great stream so far. We should have more than 85 likes. We got 190 people here. This is a great night to talk about football. Let's get it to 180 likes. We got Ed Heath in the building. Let's hit the like button so we could go on. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we try to get them donated to the football program, and we can't get the likes for free. We can't right. get the likes for free. <laughs> man, we got to do better, man. We always talking about we got to do this and that. We don't even do the simplest things. Come on, family. I, I ain't even got to say hit the like button. <laughs> I, just say, I support these brothers and what they said. Let's hit the like button. That's true. Man. But it, okay. I have to mention to the channel. channel. <laughs> right. Man, I had to say, I, this yeah, this should motivate us as fans, man. And after I'm saying what I'm saying, we don't have Doc chime in. We gotta we gotta be more about that action and supporting our teams, man. Supporting HBCUs because you see it right now; they don't care about the development about the rise of HBCUs. You just see Shadir Sanders now all of a sudden is in, in votes of next year's Heisman campaign, uh, Heisman selections. And he wasn't even being propped up like that when he was playing for Jackson State. It's a damn shame, but it's the reality. And like Monty said, he's not even surprised. I'm not surprised. Doc is not surprised. Uh, Doc, you got anything to say about that? Man, for him to be in the uh, kind of like almost on the I want to say a front runner, but on the list to you know on the Heisman Trophy watch for next season, I mean it's kind of crazy, and you know that can we just say this though, man? On this in a sense that even though he's gone, Coach Prime was was basically. Promoting the hell out of Shadur this year, and it had to it had to happen. That started talking. That talk started around around early October, and it's crazy. It's like now you figure out all the stuff that just went about. You know him being interviewed by Colorado early. You know early in the month of October, and then you know what I'm saying they that's who they wanted, and then you get the Heisman talks in it. Like bro, he he. Promoted the hell out of that, like seriously, and and it, it just it, but like like you said, you know, like you you know, we saying it's uh, it ain't smoking mirrors. Is he said, you know, you just have to read between the lines. All the stuff that was going on around October, like you literally had to read between the lines. So let's be honest, as, as football guys. If Shadur stayed at Jackson three, four years, they went undefeated again. Because I don't, like I said, I don't think nobody was going to be able to catch Jackson State um, no time soon. Realistically, what round you think he would have went in if he got, you know, he he would he would probably got a look in the NFL, you know, just with with prime and the connections he got. But he also, you know, the boy can play. We, we all know that. But realistically, even if Jackson was just running the tables and, and just, you know, beating everybody up in the swag, what round do you think he would have been in versus now he go to Pac-12 and, hell, he got the swag and the pack under his belt. What round do you think he going then? I probably – I still think he would go at least third or fourth round, between third and fifth round because of the fact that – uh if he goes to the combine, there's some little nuances they're gonna look at as far as like some some people might look at his throwing motion, some people might look at um how he handles himself in the pocket, some people might look at um you know his feet, 
uh, they'll you know that it is basically when you get into the when you get into the combine, they basically going to nitpick. Is you know what I'm saying? They're going to pick out every every little thing. So in a sense, as far as his numbers went, as far as his numbers are, uh, just in the two years at Jackson State, he 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 basically outperformed pretty much everybody. Uh, and for him, like if he would have stayed another year or so, he probably he, he probably would have broken uh, Robert Kent's record, school record. <laughs> for most passing yards, most touchdowns, uh, mm-hmm. completion percentage, uh, he would have broke all that if he would have stayed one more. It, probably either one more year or two years. See, as a football guy, what I loved about Shadur, and I do like this that Coach Fram did this with his son, is that he was not made to be the typical black cornerback that's running all the time because they don't last. You know, all of his Cam Newton, Cam Newton should, should still be playing. He didn't last. Robert Griffin, he didn't last. One thing that I can see that Dion did with Shadur and, and just by who he's had him training with is Shadur plays like the typical quarterback where he's in the pocket. Now, he's not that fast, but when he did take off and run in games, I watched, he know when to run. Um, the way the regular NFL um, pros do. But I do like the fact that he has good pocket presence and he's not the typical running black quarterback because our guys don't get the longevity as they should in the league from all the running and the hits they're taking. I mean, looking at, you know, look at Lamar Jackson right now, you know, it's good that, it, that he can run, but you don't stay as long in the league like the Brady's and, everybody else, you know, when we look at the great quarterbacks. That's that's a great point. And <laughs> when you – Monty, when you asked us about what draft Shadur would have been drafted, let me do it by this. If if Shadur would have stayed with Jackson State, I've always said fourth round. Nothing higher. Okay. Uh, I think because of his football IQ, he would do well in the wonder look tests, uh, leadership, intangibles. The scouts will take notice of that. He the only the only reason why I never had a higher grade is because the physical gifts are not like other quarterbacks. You know, like the six four six five. They always want that big, strong quarterback. And if you're shorter, you better be a, athletic as hell. Uh, I always compared Shadir to Jacoby Brissett, but it's a little bit slimmer mm-hmm. style of play. Uh, pocket passer. You see how Jacoby Brissett, he's not really a runner, but if he's in danger, he'll run and get some, some yards and call it a day. Um, I, I know he's not short. I know he's six. Well, they say he's 6'2". Um, in the combine, they probably will list him as six one and three quarters. I'm just saying how the NFL goes. Um, right. If even if he has a lot of yards in Colorado, the highest I think he can go is third round. And I've been consistent on where Shadir could go, even if he have all the accolades. Because it's about it's about it's more than just how many yards you get. It's about the, some teams of what they're looking for. There's some quarterbacks who dropped in the draft and they were better than the ones that were hot, drafted higher. It happens all the time. So it, it, it just depends on scenarios and, um, and, and Monty, how many times have you seen quarterbacks put up big numbers? Let's be real now. And, and they still falling in the draft happens all the time. Right. And, right. And, and it's going to, in the end, it's going to be based on, you know, what, what the needs are from year to year. Like I yeah. said, you know, we know Shadur at least, he still has at least two more years to go. Um, and and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of those intangibles are going to, he's going to develop more um, just because he is getting older. I mean, 
I love the fact. I mean, he's only a, he's only a sophomore. I mean, the kid is only, you know, I don't, I don't think he's twenty years old yet, and so I think he's on he's on par to you know where he should you know be good you know later on. Um, like I said, all of the one of the league tests, all the things that you're gonna do at the combine, like he's gonna knock that out. I think his father has been preparing him. You know, as they say, his 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 nickname is grown, so he's been. That 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 grown man, little kid, you know, you know, which everybody in the family has one that's always just been above everybody else in his maturity and everything. Um, so he's gonna he's gonna ace that out, you know. But we'll see as you know if he gets bigger, um, he puts on a um, little more muscle, you know, up in up in the pack. But um, you know, he definitely gonna you know have a good line. You know, he's going he gonna to have to have some big boys around him. So uh, I'm sure, you know, Deion and them is, is beefing that up, you know, for the pack. But the but the pack 12 is fast. You know, one of my kids out of Detroit, he's actually an Oregon commit. He's uh, out of my high school. Um, he's six, he's six two six three two hundred twenty five 225 pounds, five-star QB. Come, you know, we just won a state championship, six-time state champions out of Detroit King. So, you know, look for him, Dante Moore. I can't wait, you know, when he get out there, Oregon, and, and I get a chance to see him and Shador go head up. He's a baller, man. He's a winner. He's a baller. And, and I'm the biggest Shador fan around. But you got to give me credit for those who are listening because I see some people saying, oh, he should have been a first-round grade. I've seen people say – this is before the Colorado move. I've seen people say that Shador wasn't undraftable which I never believed. I've always stick to the point I saw fourth round. I at least gave him that respect because of his football IQ and football acumen. He will win scouts over. Now, to be a first rounder like Monty had mentioned, and especially Doc, it just depends on the team. Teddy didn't even go in the first round. Teddy was early second round because he had a way. I remember that draft, 2014. He was early second round. He was like 33, yeah. 32nd. He wasn't first round. Because he was another quarterback that had intangibles, high IQ, but the NFL always looks for extra something for the first round. Right. I'm telling you how the NFL goes. Teddy put all those numbers up in Louisville and still went to the second round. Lamar Jackson won the Heisman. And I know they're different quarterbacks, but still – it's a game within a game with the NFL. You don't know what to expect. And, and and let's look at the and the the popularity. I mean, just I mean, right now when you look at the portal, you know, and, and this is something you know where you see somebody doing something is working, and we just don't want to copy it. You know, we've been you know we was talking about all year about you know the social media impressions that um, Dion did with Jackson state and constantly being on and constantly keeping Jackson in some type of news, how none of the other HBCU coaches, it's, I felt like they all was like giving a cold shoulder to Dion, but y'all seeing what this man doing is working. And just even right now where people kept saying, well, you know, who wants to go to Colorado? Who wants to go there? Well, there's a lot of damn players in this portal that's going to Colorado all of a sudden. You know, so because the generation we have is social media driven. And one thing these kids do know and see, we see Coach Prime on social media all the time, because let's be honest, I'm 45 years old. Our age and up is the ones who really seen Coach Prime play. Most of these kids, they never seen him play. He was already retired by then. So they didn't, you know, we, we watched those great returns and runbacks and all of that stuff, you know. But because he has stayed relevant on social media, thanks to um, Deion Sanders Jr., his son, who, who's running his social media, you know, if you look at his numbers, Deion Sanders, Well Off Media has 60,000 YouTube subscribers a week ago. You know how many he got now? 140? No, it's, it's more than that now. <laughs> it done right. up. Hey man, that's, in in that's a week like, that train rolling, bro. Oh, so 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 so, so <laughs> here's the thing: what Dion is doing, he is he is utilizing the social media, which everybody has access to, 
and he's all social media in them right now. And all these young guys, that's, this is that generation, they seeing that. And this is, you know, I mean, here it is. Like I said, this program was, I mean, it's, it's, it's a trip. This was a one-win team. And already we talk about Shadur, uh, Shadur being a Heisman candidate. People are already talking about eight wins. I mean, this is, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy. I mean, I would love to see this guy, Dion, to, to do a marketing. I was hoping, like, Jackson State should have had him do it, teaching a marketing class, being an adjunct professor while he was there. You know, I would have been doing something because, hey, dope. you know, because social media wasn't even around when Dion was playing. We can imagine if it was back when he was playing, but it wasn't even around. And so, you know, somehow, you know, he's he's really, to me, taking a job at Jackson State really helped reinvent himself and gave him longevity. You know, it's kind of like Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, didn't been, Snoop Dogg didn't outlasted everybody in the rap game. It's still love. Man, let me tell you like this. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all like this. Deion Sanders got his bachelor's in marketing himself at Florida State. He got his master's. <laughs> he got his master's from from the late great Eugene Parker, his agent. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. He got his doctorate of ma- marketing himself from the great from from Jerry Jones. Oh yeah. For the Dallas Cowboys. Why? Because he they said I'm going to Put you know what I'm saying like when he got the cow to the Cowboys, it's basically like saying he told him like you could be the greatest thing. You could take something that was so average, and all you had to do is just blow it up, blow it up, blow it up, and make it the greatest thing on earth. You don't think that what he did with Jackson State? It don't get me wrong. You, I love Jackson. I'm, I, that's my school, and we've been you know what I'm saying we've been. We everybody know about that state, but he he took he the, Jerry Jones it. He Jerry Jones. You just said it. He Jerry Jones it and took it to the <laughs> stratosphere, y'all. Y'all have to understand. And I don't don't get me don't don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Everybody in the chat, don't don't crucify me and don't do nothing like that, please. All right. What I'm saying is, he learned from different people. At every step of the way where he went. When he was uh, in Atlanta, uh, Jerry Glanville, you know what I'm saying, to be brash and outspoken and stuff like that, talk your talk, talk your shit, you know what I'm saying? That's how. That's where he got that from. He got that, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, he got work ethic, but he seen true work ethic when he got to the 49ers and saw Jerry Rice. He, mm-hmm. also, saw, he also saw how you become a successful, you know what I'm saying, marketer. Also, when he was with the 49ers with uh, Carmen, DePo- you know, Carmen Policy and the DeBartolo, the DeBartolo family. Then when he got to the Cowboys, it was basically, it was basically like he done graduated and got his doctorate of marketing from Jerry Jones. Like, the man has done everything and he learned from a lot of people. And that's the reason why, okay, you know, he want to get back to the kids. He started his own program. He had started his own youth program. You know what I'm saying? He tried to start the, the you know, he started the, the charter school here in Dallas. But, you know, it was too many chiefs and not enough Indians and too many egos got involved in that whole situation. That's the reason why Prime Prep was a failure, you know what I'm saying, as a charter school. He learned his lesson from that. And so basically, he got it to like he want if he want to impact kids. I mean, he go into coaching, go into coaching. You 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 know what I'm saying? And he's doing a damn good job. You know, he did a damn good job of being an office coordinator at, at Trinity Christian. They won four state titles. You know what I'm saying? He gets you know what I'm saying. And guess who gave him his first break? It's Jackson State. You know what I'm saying? If it, 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 if it wasn't for us, Prime would not be being that old power five right now. 
Let's just get that. Let's just get that straight and let's get that clear, y'all. If it weren't for Jackson State, Coach Prime would not be at Colorado right now. If it weren't for, if, if we want to get it, like you said, you want to get it too with the HBCUs. If it weren't for Talladega College, giving him his degree, he wouldn't be at Jackson State. He wouldn't be at Colorado or wherever the next uh, 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 destination would be for him after Colorado. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? But he's I'm, I'm, so I'm, much. I'm, 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 but but see but see that that right there even that in itself to me that's the BS because basically when it comes to our people we always getting we not good enough you know it re- it was no reason why Florida State shouldn't have gave that man a job like you said this is he built he built Florida State and he wasn't good enough I I tell you what when Tom Brady finally retired from the NFL. Mm-hmm. If he want to be a football coach, you think Tom Brady got to come back here to Michigan and be up on the high bar for a year or two? He got to go no. and be assistant. If no. Tom Brady says, I want to coach football, some school out here <laughs> that got a coaching position available is going to bring him right on in. Yeah, and then he's a coach's son because his dad was a coach. Right. So, it, so, So even, you know, Yes, we got to give credit to Jackson State. I don't not take nothing from that or giving him the opportunity. And, you know, Dion had other opportunities, but hell, who's going to hire Dion to be the coordinator or working on their staff? And he's, he's behind you and he's prime time. See, that's, that's kind of like the gift and the curse. It would been, a, it would have been hard to bring him in anywhere. Without him being a head coach, and some people just got that 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 bravado that he got to be the head coach. Come on, where else he was going to go? True, that is true. His if he's there and he just coaching your D backs, he's still going to get all the sham because he's still going to be prime. He's still going to be doing all the social media. So it was. So I agree. It's like, hey, I'm a head coach or I'm not a coach. And 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 once you get to this level at the Power Five. As you see, when you look at the staff that he's building up, he just grabbed a guy from Alabama. He grabbed a yep. guy from LSU. Yep. When you at this position, you really are just a general manager. That's it. Your job is to talk to the boosters, keep that money coming in, and win and and win and win games, and basically you get that big paycheck. Like people don't realize, the brother who was there before Dion. Um, not this last coach, but Mel Tucker. Mel Mel Tucker had a decent year at Colorado, and Michigan State came here and got him. Do y'all know how much money Michigan State gave Mel Tucker last year? 95 mil over 10 95. 95. You know what I'm saying? For for having a decent season, now I'm saying to myself, because I'm not really a, a Michigan or Michigan State. Like I said, I attend an HBCU, so just because so many folks here in Detroit, love Michigan. I go for Michigan State just because, because I know a lot of brothers who gotten jobs at Michigan State, and Michigan State does heavily recruit out of the um, the Detroit area. And actually, a couple coaches from the Detroit area got moved up to Michigan State when Mel Tucker came in. And I was sitting here saying to myself, if, if Michigan State had got prime, man, Jim Harbaugh be ready to retire because Michigan what? would never win. <laughs> What man, man, or or somebody like Ohio State? It, oh. That last game of the season would be would be nasty. Shoot, you talking about them folks don't like each other, man? Shoot, it, it would have been a hundred times worse just because of Prime, the head coach of Ohio State, if that would have happened. Oh man, are they? I'm, and I mean, and, and it's almost like what is? I mean, I think we are seeing. He's not gonna be at Colorado long. I think, (laughs) you know, I think if he goes and does his thing, you know, somebody else gonna be some somebody else gonna be calling. People keep saying, you know, NFL. You know, I think I I believe that Dion does not want to go to NFL because I think he could have he could have been got a job in the NFL somewhere. He already he already said he didn't want to go to the NFL. Yeah, he said that in sixty minutes. He didn't want to go to the NFL. Yeah, so. But 
you know, going somewhere bigger, you know, and, and like I said, if he does good there, trust me, all of these different coaches he's bringing in right now, these other schools are going to be, you know, you know, coming for your coaching tree. I mean, and that's, that's how it goes. That's what makes the, the savings relevant and everything, you know, I mean, even in the NFL level, the Belichick, you know, guys get jobs off of who you work for. All right. You know, hey, DJ, let, let me say this for, for, the, yeah. for the players that's on the team right now for at Jackson State. Stay the course, y'all. I, I, this, I'm addressing this to all the players that's still on the team right now at Jackson State. They haven't hit the portals. Stay the course. Y'all stay the course. The job ain't finished yet until the clock hits double zero <laughs> at the end of the fourth quarter on December the 17th, okay? Now, if you decide that you want to enter the transfer portal, you need to have a long and heavy talk with your people, with your parents, with your coaches, and see what is the best avenue for you. Now, I understandably so that most of y'all Majority, everybody are young adults, young men that can make decisions for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Just let everybody know that transfer portal is nothing to be played with. Because if you get in there without the advice, without any type of any type of advice, y'all, from from people that's telling you what's going on, guess what? You're still going to, you're going to be stuck in a portal for the year of 2023. And then you might be stuck in there for the year of 2024. Uh, if you're trying to leave, if you're trying to leave and get into the portal, hey, sometimes you might have to swallow your pride. You might not be able to go D, you know, uh, Power 5 or G5. You might have to swallow your pride and go D2, D3, NAI. <laughs> Or you might have to go back to the ju you might have to go to the JUCO race just to get you some film, you know, to play and get you some film in order for you to come back and fulfill your fulfill your uh your obligation. So this is why I'm saying to all the kids there that's on the team, just stay the course and just listen to I mean, if you're gonna enter the portal, Get you like I said. Talk to your people. Talk to your 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 parents. Talk to your coaches, and get the right sound advice from them. Because just talking to your homeboy ain't gonna get you nowhere. True. You know what I'm saying? Ain't gonna get you mm -hmm. nowhere because they are gonna tell you one thing. Oh man, you should be you should be power five right now. You should be at at Alabama right now, selling you a pipe dream. Guess what? You are gonna be sitting at the house on the couch watching the game like the rest of us doing. Man, I've heard some portal nightmares. I heard some uh, transfer nightmares before the transfer portal was even implemented. So it's it's no joke, man. And Monte, oh, I wanted to ask you this because I, I said this earlier. Since Dennis Thurman is not going to be in Jackson State, he's going to Colorado, and Brett Bartolome. What what do you think the head coach should be like? You, you may not name who should it be, but. What's your idea of 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 a fit for Jackson State? The, the type of head coach they need. I mean, so I look at it like this: um, everybody is everybody. You know, you know, a lot of people is upset with the way this happened with Coach Prime. Uh, we always talking about promoting within. Um, I don't know why why TC Taylor can't get a shot, considering he's been on his ride with him these past couple of years and saw a lot of things get done. And, you know, he's, a, he's, a, you know, he's a Jackson alum. And it's like, well, why are we overlooking that guy? You know, um, that he's been there. Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Jackson state should be trying to get another celebrity coach, another celebrity coach or whatever, because if they come in and do a good job, the same thing is going to happen. So, you know, I think TC should get a, should get a shot. At um getting his job, I mean, it seemed like a lot of coaches that people were mentioning. You know, I heard Taggart out there, Deion swooped him up. 
You know, I've been hearing people saying, you know, getting Mike Mentor, but I don't know if Mentor is going to leave that position to come to Jackson. But um, I think the job is better than what he found it. And TC has been there as a lot of this change and, you know, has taken place. So, you know, why, why, why not get, why not, why bring a whole nother outside person that's going to have to change everything? Cause I do agree with Dion said, it should be somebody in house because here's the thing. Every player can't go to Colorado. Every player don't qualify to go to Colorado. So you still have some that have to stay, stay put and, why Jackson still has his light on him, you know, you showing out and keep the social media going, you know, that, you know, they can still, they can still get, you know, some recognition. I mean, if you, if you balling right now with the internet, you don't have to be at a big school. The scouts were already coming to Jackson and seeing that there's some players down here in the SWAC, which is always been. And I think that's what all what you wanted. Cause this, when you think about it, Coaches like Belichick, he goes into small and small schools and look for players <laughs> eighth, ninth round you never heard of and turn them into stars. Yeah, he does that every time. So that it, it it really doesn't matter where you are. I know people keep talking about that crap. Like if you don't go power five, you you can't go to the NFL. There's a lot of power five players that don't even get drafted that put up some really good numbers. It just depends on what. Yeah. The coach I mean, if, if if you if you got your head on straight, you're not getting in trouble. Your grace is decent, and you got, you know, you got good social media behind you. You know, if if, if I was playing if I was playing football in this era right now, I have a good social media person behind me. One of my boys. I mean, like I said, Dion Dion Sanders Jr. is the one who's running his dad's media. So at some point, he said, "Hey." My son seemed to know what he's doing, and obviously he does, and he let him run with it. So if I was one of these kids, I'd be looking at one of my friends that really is good at the social media and, you know, still putting in the work, you know, because at the end of the day, you got to put the work in. You know what's crazy, though, y'all? He doing this on the iPhone. Yeah. (laughs) Bucky is doing all that on the iPhone. (laughs) Hey, you know, fella, so camera because it because because here's I always tell I I got my own IT business fella. I've been in IT over 25 years since I graduated from HBCU, and I always tell people, um, you know, it it doesn't it doesn't matter about your IQ, it's your I will. Like you said, this guy is doing all of this on an iPhone, and when I look at the numbers. And I'm seeing 150 subscribers. And when you look at to join the channel, 299, 699, 24.99. When I just do my little my little janky math and take half of that, and if he getting 299 a month from each one of them, that's 200,000. Yep. That's 200,000. And how old is Deion Sanders Jr.? Bucky, I mean, yeah, he's like, he making more money Bucky than like, his daddy. <laughs> Bucky, Bucky, like 28. 20, 28, yeah, yeah, Bucky 28. And plus, you got to realize, Bucky not just doing the social media. Bucky got his own clothes. Bucky got the clothing line. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, because I, I talked to Bucky, like, I literally talked to Bucky personally. I, I met him here, you know, while he was in Dallas, when he was staying in Dallas. Uh, he was at one of the wholesale stores. And he was getting like uh, just clothing and stuff, so he can make you know to get through his clothing. And so I just ran into him. I told him how you know I asked him how he he you know go about doing his business, and he just told me just to you know what I'm saying stay the course. And this is be- y'all, and this is before I got on to to the YouTube podcast game. But you know what I'm saying, my me and my wife we got a heat press machine. And so we do shirts and everything. So he just told me, like, man, you got ideas, you got this, you got that, and you stay the course. Like, he didn't, have to tell, he didn't tell me, like, you ain't got to spend, you don't, you, you got to spend this, that, this amount of money, that amount of money and stuff. You know, he just say, 
you got the ideas, you got everything in your head, if you got everything laid out, just go about doing it and stay the course doing it. And you know what I'm saying? It was just like a that was just like a probably like a 10 minute conversation we had in the parking lot. And after that, you know what I'm saying, started with the shirts and then like I said, with this with me doing the podcast, it's like shoot. It, it, you know, it resonates like you gotta stay the course. Everything that you do, you know what I'm saying, you gotta stay, you gotta stay true to it. And you gotta stay committed to it. And that's the best thing that he done, especially with with well off media, like, you know what I'm saying? Him being on the sidelines and stuff like that, that 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 gave the football program uh, a, a needed boost. Plus, with the pre, you know, the pregame show being on the sidelines and doing player interviews on the sideline, <clears throat> gave the university much, you know, the football program much needed, you know, what I'm saying airtime. And then this season, then you see it this year, this season, like it just it took off. It took off. Yeah, we, yeah. When you, when you look at his numbers versus Neely and the pregame, it's night and day. And they both, they <laughs> both of them, a lot of time is filming at the same time, you know. But I love seeing that from our young brothers out here, especially being a technology guy, taking advantage out here. I, I, I teach, I teach young people that work for me all the time. If Facebook not paying you, why are you getting them all your time unless unless you want me to help prepare you to get a job at Facebook? Because most of our people don't understand the social media, this internet is all tied to advertising. YouTube, all of this. I remember when YouTube was first going into the monetization route and everything, yep. and we got a lot of young brothers out here that's millionaires that understood the game, you know, but, you know, some of the old folks, you know, unlike myself, who I'm a part of this, so I have to stay on top of this. When you listen to like, um, like I like watching Country Rain stuff and you hear people like Faison, Faison Love talking about he ain't making the money. Man, Country Rain getting a million dollars a month off of damn YouTube and ain't did a movie yet. <laughs> like he and getting Facebook. real money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but. But, 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 you know, you have people who, because they don't, under, when we don't understand it, we're going to hate on it and think it's not real. And it's like, okay, it, 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 it ain't real. But, you know, these young brothers is pulling up in Lambos and all this other stuff at 21, 22, and they didn't went and paid for a cash off a Facebook check. And they're not on the corners. And they're not doing anything illegally. They're using their iPhones and, and constantly posting. You know, so like I said, you know, congrats, congrats to Dion Jr. Because think about the pressure. He's Dion Jr. And he wasn't nowhere near the talent of his father is. I mean, when you really think about it, it didn't went down the generations. Shiloh's good and Dion Shadour. The younger brothers is the ones that's the football greats in the fam. Mm -hmm. You know, Always. you know, but I, I like the fact that he found something that he was good at. And credit to his father, hey, that's your thing. Go ahead and do it because guess what? That's the most important piece right now. This help this that has helped Coach Prime. Yeah, so man, like I understand we got a you know Jack State having a fifteen thousand dollar you know what I'm saying um, budget you know as far as when it comes to recruiting. Like you said, man, all you have to do, I mean, you ain't got to spend a whole, you don't have to spend a lot. All you have to do is get on, on your phone, on Instagram, on on Facebook, on on YouTube, on Twitter, and put yourself out there and, and keep putting yourself out there. And, and the best thing about it is, I'm going to tell you all this, the best thing about it is you can do, some, you can get somebody to do it for you. That could be an internship for somebody to do that to run the social media platform for Jackson State University football, and I bet you it'll take off because young people are, are you know, young people are on social media all the time, twenty four seven, three sixty five, and just getting one of them that's really want to get they you know what I'm saying try to get their real you know foot in they do in, in the door. 
and just say, hey, man, we're going to bring you in as an intern. I, ain't, I may not be able to pay as much, but at least you'll get that experience. And then you'll be on, you know what I'm saying, going on the road with us and, and making sure you post this on Instagram, you know, on, on all social media platforms. You can help, you can get it done without, you know what I'm saying, breaking a bank. Yeah. And, and you have to be able to, you have to be able to trust them. You know, a lot, you know, like I said, our people, we can be stubborn and, and not allowing a change. And, and trusting young folks, you know, I always pour back into my community. I've, I've trained many young folks in, in this field and I always, you know, I, you, you know, you, you got to let them go, let them run with it because this things is moving so fast right now. You know, like I said, all the people talking about, well, you know, Colorado been dead all these years and in one week because of social media, they already being talked about. <laughs> It's being a championship program next year, and it's still a whole 300 something days away before the next season starts. And they're gonna stay in the social media. They're just gonna stay. They're gonna they're gonna stay up there in that algorithm until that season starts. Yeah. Man, we gotta talk some football, man. I'm yeah. ready for some football. To come hey, yeah, yeah, man. man. Uh, hey, shout out, shout out to my Lions beating the Vikings today. Man, sure they do something. Bro, your Lions look scary right now. I'm a Cowboy fan, but we we almost lost to the damn Texans. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, man, anybody can be beat, man. But the Lions, man, they got everybody clicking, man. They got Jamison Williams back. I watched that game on TV. They – they got all the weapons on the field. They got all the speed. Chart and James, and James Houston. James Houston. Shout out to James Houston, the steal of the draft. Uh, what is he? Ten, oh, yeah. Second oh, yeah. among rookies in sacks already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he and I, I look, it was a win win for me. I was telling all my people when we, when we got him out of Jackson, because, you know, it's it's amazing to me, and I just had to realize on how many of our people who don't know an HBCU football, and that was crazy to me. Even when looking at some of these shows, I was listening to some of them NFL players talking about, I didn't know what a Jackson State was until Coach Pram, and I'm saying to myself, you idiot. How could you not know Jackson State with Walter Payton, you know, any anything from the swag. How could you not know this where these grades came from? So that let me know that you was really not a student of football if you didn't know where the hell Walter Payton came from. Just that alone. But but um but yeah, I was I was happy when we when we actually got him up here. And um, uh, you know, just like my Lions, I mean, we had a good brother that was a coach that was a coach. They let rid of Carwell. I, I still don't understand why that happened because we was we've been going backwards ever since so right now everybody's feeling good we you know we on this five out of six last games and you know with football those who clicking towards it you know later the season those are teams become dangerous and um you know we got this minnesota game behind us which you know um you know we make we make and do something you know i'm not i'm not fully to say we all the way there you know, but um, you know, s- salute and salute to um, salute to um, to Houston coming up here and doing his thing and getting that shot. And, and, yeah. and one thing I, I realize about the Lions, Monty, uh, is Jared Goff when he has good protection on that offensive line, he throws a good ball. I said, hmm, that's amazing. When he has enough time to throw, he throws a a, a really good ball, and uh. The, I don't think people realize the Lions, metric, metric-wise, has one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we had to um, add, add, add some pieces. Like I said, I, I, I still don't know why we got rid of Caldwell when that was the only brother to take us to the yeah, playoffs yeah. in yeah, years. Yeah. And um, we let him go, and then, you know, two two other light skinned folks came in, 
who couldn't do nothing. Um, I like Campbell, and, you know, I think now that we clicking towards the end, you know, he'll get another shot before a minute. It was looking like he was about to be out of here, you know, as, as, as well, you know, but being up here in Detroit, you know, you know, my thing is, is, you know, just as a black man, you know, I want to see our people in these positions. We, I want, we, sh- we should see more black coaches in the NFL, in the head, in the head spot. This is a game that we dominate, you know, um, the same way they dominate hockey. If it was all black coaches in hockey and all white players, then people be up in arms. So, you know, yeah. so, I, you know, I, I was I was mad about that because I am I am black first. That's what I said. I, I didn't really know who Mel Tucker was at Colorado. I wasn't following Colorado, but when he got the Michigan State job and they gave the brother ninety five million. Hey, salute to him. You know, now, hopefully he get to finish it out, you know, because uh, he lost to Michigan this year and hey, he got to beat him. He got to beat him next year because <laughs> because. You don't win that game or the Ohio State game. Um, they ready to get rid of you up here. And that's what people don't realize about the F- the FBS. And uh, this is the last thing I say about Dion though. Dion knows this more as well as all of us. He's got to win. Now his first step is to be ab- above five hundred or get right at five hundred. You can't yeah. have five five or below wins. You just can't. They don't. They don't care about if they just won one game last year. You can't go and say, "Oh, we won four games. At least is better than one game." I'm telling you, these these other folks, <laughs> they don't care, man. Man, let's, uh, he, he, he let's, got let's, he got to shoot. He got to shoot. He got to shoot. He got to shoot for six books. Yep. Now, if your partner got two more, if your partner can get squeeze out another book with the four spade <laughs> in the last hand, that's fine. But 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 but. I, I I think realistically, he's probably shooting for six. Yeah, six six to give them some six to give them some um some 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 real some real hope. But I'm a, I'm gonna say you know I'm optimistic that I mean he I mean hell he can he can do it. I mean like I said I, we weren't expecting him to do what he did at Jackson this this early on. I mean this is I mean come on Jackson. Had 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 won really like that in some years. I mean, he came in minus the little COVID season and went undefeated in the SWAC the first year, and then again. I mean, hell, that's like a twenty. That's like you know, as far as in the SWAC outside of lose. And I think the celebration, bro. I think Jackson really just lost that because I don't think it was really made out to be a big thing to them versus winning the SWAC championship. I think the celebration bowl was something that. They were so happy of winning that that it really wasn't looked at as a as a big thing. Yeah, I don't think they. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think Jackson State appreciated the Celebration Bowl last year, like uh, South Carolina State. South Carolina State played with a certain pride and determination. Um, Jackson State, they were having a good old time in Atlanta, so I I, I bet that's gonna change this year. Uh, this should be a close game. I don't yeah. think it's gonna be a blowout at all. I, no, nah, that Davius Richard. That I'm gonna tell you that Davius Richard, uh, as quarterback for Central, I he he built like a tank and he has an arm. Um, my whole thing is like, yeah, Deputy Mario said, uh, you know, you got to be on him. You got to be on his behind every play, but you also got to have uh. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of outside containment because he can't run on the outside. And he also can run inside too because he's y'all, he's like 220, about 215 to 225. Solid. Um, yeah, they list him at 215, but Davis Richard looks like he's bigger than that. Yeah. Um, so the it's it's all about containment. Um, and basically, you know, basically the game plan, shoot the, you know, linebacker, shoot the gaps, uh, and, and, you know, saying the back half of the, the back half of the defense, you know, you play your man. Uh, so the, that would be one of the things. And then to the, you know, stop that running game, 
uh, that they do have because I think they average probably like a little bit over 200 yards rushing as a team. Um, so they're, they're this is an actually balanced team, y'all. This is not no one sided. This this team is not one sided offensively. This is a balanced team in the air and and on the ground. On defense, for us, for 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 them on defense, they uh, from what I heard, they do play a three three five uh, defense, which I hate, but. In a sense, you can kind of bring them. They can kind of shift it to like a four-two-five because they could bring a linebacker now and put his hand in the dirt, and then have your two other linebackers standing up, and then you got five DBs that's in the back that could cover. But uh, their whole thing is for central is basically to keep everything in front of them. And y'all, we you know you know how. Jackson State love to to test people with test teams with the deep ball, um, see you know kind of see where they at. Um, uh, the 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 start for Jackson State offense it starts with three six mafia, <laughs> Savion Wilkinson. You got to feed that kid. You got to feed him at least ten times in the, like the first possession or first two possessions of the game because. That three three five, you you can actually gash them. You can actually gash that that defense just by running the ball and running it down their throat. <laughs> That's good. Well, well, we definitely need to. Um, this is an ABC game. I think the numbers, as far as the, the viewership, you know, with all of the swag and, and me at watching, um, that we need to really show show the viewership on this game uh, for the Celebration Bowl. Because I was just sitting here looking up something, man, and I'm like, it's crazy. Y'all know what the payout is for the Celebration Bowl? Yeah, Perfect. for the Celebration Bowl, I think uh, they uh, – in fact, the, the uh, guy that actually is over the Celebration Bowl, we had him on Twitter one time, and I think the payout is like two mil. Yeah, so it's so it's it's a it's a meal per conference. You know what I'm saying? It's a nationally televised game. So this we talk about this got to be more money, you know, being paid out to the schools. I mean, I mean, I know a million dollars is a lot, but just for everybody to understand, when we're talking about football programs in these bowls, that's that's not a lot of money. I think we got. Dan Gilbert up here in Michigan, who owns the Cleveland Cavaliers and Rocket Mortgage, like he set up a bowl game here. Um, usually, it's right after right after Christmas, um, where the Lions play a for a bit for a field. I'm about to see what that bowl game payout is, because that's usually like the um, the Mac schools playing that. Yeah, uh, TB. Uh, you see the thing? TB said, "Can Shallow play safety at the Division One level?" Well, he Shallow did in South Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> well, where's that? Let me find it. Let me find it. He, start, he started at South Carolina, y'all, as a freshman. He contributed. In fact, he was on the same team. He was in the same defensive backfield at J.C. Horn. That was the that was a first round draft pick for the Carolina Panthers. He can play on the Division One level. Yeah, I, he can, but I, I really hope that Shallow stays. I, I know I'm being biased. <laughs> I get it. But I hope that Shallow stays because here's what happens for those who stay, because it really is all about the players who graduate from HBCUs. Your your legacy is cemented when you graduate from the HBCU. And if you're drafted, it's nothing like uh, when Roger Goodell calls a school uh, your name in the school's name. Such and such from Jackson State, such and such from FAMU, and so forth, or any other school. Uh, and that's why I hate that. I got to be honest. That's why I hate this whole thing that uh, Deion going to Colorado. But I, I, I'm pretty much moved on from it. But I hate that it happened because I always wanted Shadir 
to be drafted from Jackson State to be drafted from an HBCU because I, I I know what it would have meant to a lot of people. So when he gets drafted, I, I, I already know what's going to happen. When he gets drafted, he's going to mention both schools out of sympathy and all that stuff, and I get all that, but it's not the same. It is not the same. And uh, when James Houston was drafted, even though he went to Florida, he repped JSU. Yep. That meant something to people. You know why? You know why, DJ? Because when he was at Jackson State, he learned how to be a man at Jackson State. He didn't learn mm-hmm. how to play football at Florida. <laughs> right. He learned how to be a man and to be a leader at Jackson State. <laughs> hey, that's something that we do. That's something that we put out right there. We we put out people when you come into the school. When you come into the, when you come into Jackson State, you're gonna come in as a boy, and then when you leave out, you're gonna leave out as a man and a leader amongst people. So, so that that that's something that 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 we can actually hang our hat on too, right there. Like we do put out leaders amongst you know leaders amongst people and and men and women. You know what I'm saying? Um. The the uh, celebration bowl, man. I've heard that it is sold out. From what I heard, I think they yeah. opened up the the top level of uh, uh, Mercedes Benz. <laughs> yeah, people saying those so, tickets are expensive as hell right now. It is. It's bowl game season. It's bowl game. That's and and. And let's just be proud. Let's just be proud. Let's be proud of the fact that we, as a, as as two HBCU conferences, have a bowl game where everybody else is fighting to play in the playoffs to get skull drug by North Dakota State. Right. <laughs> Man, so, uh, so that bowl game, that bowl game, we got up here in Detroit, which is a. Um, it's it's a fairly new bowl. It's the quick and lane quick 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 lane bowl. It's a projected payout of two million dollars. And um that's with um New Mexico State and Bowling Green, which is right up the road, who's playing that up in Detroit for I I'll be out of town for Christmas this year, unfortunately. But that I I I normally go down to check out that game just because, you know, it's a it's a football game, it's down here, it's right after Christmas and it's at four field. So Hey, New Mexico State made a bowl game. That's yeah, weird. Mexico, they always lose it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, New, New Mexico, Mexico State, State versus Bowling Green. And Bowling yeah, Green Mexico State mm-hmm. just got in. They squeaked in. Oh, uh, I, I think their head coach was uh correct me if I'm wrong, uh Jerry Kill. Or Jerry Kill. I think he's the head coach. Because he's yeah, they did make they were they were six and six. Uh, I'm trying to see who the head coach of this team. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Kill. He used to coach at Minnesota. So, yeah, that's yeah, all I got. I, 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 I hope we break. I hope we break some numbers this year with the celebration bowl, not just viewership wise, as well as you know, um, in person, because you know, at the end of the day. You know, this is about money. It's college football, this sports. It's about it's about money. And, and here's the thing. And I I thought about this the other day. You guys can correct me. I don't see any of the sports, Vegas and everything, putting any odds on the HBCU games like they do in the other games. Are, are they doing that anywhere? Because I've never seen that. They're not doing it enough. Because I think once that started happening, now you got more people just paying attention. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, the gambling, you know, the fantasy sports, I mean, that 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 has taken over, you know, sports, period. Yeah, that's 
Because I, I I remember a couple of years back, if you all remember that when um when Cam Newton little brother with Howard went out to UNLV and they whooped them out there in Vegas. It, yeah, boy, it, 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 it boy, you talking about if you had put a thousand dollars on Howard, you walked away with fifty thousand from Vegas. Because that was like the largest upset, um, uh, because they wasn't expecting to beat UNLV. Man, I forgot about that game. That the <laughs> uh, only reason why I know because I got I got a boy. I got we had a kid. We had a kid from Detroit that was playing in that game, and my boy flew out there to Vegas because one of his kids um was at Howard and played in that game, and he said, "Man." Them white folks was mad. <laughs> they, came out, they came out. They came out there, you know, and and you know, and 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 beat them, and everything. They was not, you know, they wasn't expecting that. And I think, I think that's one of the things I wanted to. I did want to see. I agree with Coach Prime of getting. You there, Monty? You got me? Yeah, I got we get you now. Yeah, yeah. No, I said, you know, um, you know, that's one thing I did want to see with Coach Prime was Jackson State starting to begin to play some of these other schools, you know, um, and begin beating them. You know, but at the same time, when we just look at the history of our schools, you know, it was when you look at all these historical games it was the small schools that came and bit these big schools and you know that's bad for business you know that's just bad for business so um i don't know if any of these schools really would have wanted to play jackson state come next year the year after and get a chance of being beat you know by those by those little fellas from jackson yeah, I, if I was a power five school, and I don't care if Deion Sanders is the coach or not anymore. I don't care if Deion Sanders is not the coach anymore. I'm not scheduling Jackson State because in that, the players' mind, they believe they can beat anybody. Exactly. You never and, want to play against teams that believe they can beat anybody, especially right. Jackson State. I mean, and the thing about it is our history of us getting – into these schools was our schools beating them and these schools realizing we need some people. You know, I, I'm a student of history. So, you know, like I said, the Alabamas of the world and all that is, is it's amazing. I went to school in Kentucky, you know, Rupp Arena, and it was that school out of Texas that went up there and beat the University of Kentucky that Coach Riley was a team on, was um was a um, teammate on, you know. People don't want those stories. They don't want those stories happening no more. They, they can't afford for it to happen. Yes, yeah, it's, it's on us to su support these HBCUs. I still have the dream that it one day will be where the, the playing field will be level. I know it will take some time. But as long as you try, as long as you keep believing that, that it's possible – you never know. One day it may happen. But we do as a community. We have the money to, to get that done uh, in due time. Shoot, we, we got enough money to buy Jordans and jewelry and every other thing that's not even needed. We have enough to support our schools. But it, it takes a collective unit. And um, I'm still excited, even though Dion's at another school. I'm excited of the possibilities of – I've already said this too, that the SWAC will be at its best competitive year 2023. I said it at the beginning of the season, and I'm going to stand by it. I think FAMU is going to be good. I think Grambling is going to be better. I think many teams are going to be better. Texas Southern and, and uh, Southern itself, uh, as long as Southern gets a different quarterback. <laughs> Hey, but, hey, here's the thing. We talk about that portal, 
hell, that was just bad coaching. The, the guy who they put in, who 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 actually gave gave Jackson State a good game, hell, they don't want him. We need to be taking him. <laughs> Jackson State need to be taking him because that boy, that boy was balling. If he got in that game early, it 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 would have been it would have been a, a a much closer game. Yeah, I beg it like that. With with Bubba McDaniel got in the game, man, he put the whole tape on his back. Yeah, I think he was a grad, he's a graduate senior. He's a graduate. Oh, he's senior. okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. They, I, I mean, that was just. I mean, he clearly was the best guy for the job, and you trying to beat Jackson State. And I mean, here's the thing for all Jackson State fans. Everybody still know y'all didn't whoop them two years in a row, so. Um, I hope Ashley go ahead and schedule Alabama State to come in and play for homecoming this year. So I think you can get a sold out game with that, you know. So it is, it's going to be a revenge season. So it's going to be, you know, how how the team is going to, um, you know, you know, hold hold for this next season coming in because you know, fam, you owe owe y'all a whooping for two years in a row, not being able to win the Orange Orange Blossom Classic and all that other stuff. Man, I can't, I can't wait for next year, man. Uh, Monty uh, and Doc, man, any last words before we roll out, man? This has been an excellent stream, I tell you, man. Man, I'm gonna tell you just like this: y'all get ready for this week. About to be packed. About to be a packed show. Might have to bring you on to the show, uh, DJ. <laughs> uh, no so. doubt. You're going to get some stuff, and then everybody that's new to your channel, tell them to go, go over to my channel, HBCU Overdrive with Doc Holiday. Make sure you 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 watch everything, like it, comment, share, then, you know, most of us all subscribe. We're trying to get this thing. I'm almost to 1,000, y'all. Yeah, let's get them to 1,000, man. That's in the, big, the best way to support these channels. Like you said, like and share. Giving back helps, too. But liking and sharing is the best thing. Countdown time, it says, Coach Prime farewell game. Well, it's going to be the last game. I don't know if it's going to be a farewell. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm, you know, Jack, you are know, HBCU fans, man. Even the ones that say they have moved on, they're not going to treat it as a farewell game. They're going to be like, the game is over. Thank God. Where's our new coach? I'm just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. Any last words, Monty? Hey man, just hey, great show, great show for tonight. Um, a lot of, you know, I think it was a, a well balanced show. Um, because like I said, at the end of the day, I think we all are our coach prime, you know, fans as well. Um, love what he did. Um, you know, but Jackson State. The, the lights is the lights and cameras are still on you. You know what you're gonna do with it. Let's get that coaching decision made, and you know continue. You know building building for next year. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna still be, you know support supporting you know Jackson State, uh, football and, and other SWAT you know um, programs, and you know and for our people, it's like hey, you know. Send a dollar, send fifty dollars. You know, especially if you're an alum of Jackson State or a fan, send money back to our HBCUs. Like you said, mm -hmm. we as black people, we spend more money on everything else. And I challenge everybody to send something because that's the diff. That's really the major difference between us and them is they will donate back. They will give. To the program you know i went to kentucky state i was in the marching band my school need uniforms right now instead of complaining about it there's a good band director down there i sent him a nice check last year and i just talked to him the other day say hey doc anything else that i can do you know what i'm saying because my thing is all of us that enjoyed our time all the time we had if if a if hundred of us gave a thousand dollars we got new uniforms especially 100 alumni, and there's way more people who have benefited from the uni university, and, you know, we, we, we spend money on everything else. I mean, my wife my wife spends $10 a day on Starbucks coffee. I don't understand it, but we got the money. You heard it first, man. This is a great stream, and Monty, you're always welcome, man. Same with you, Doc, man. Uh, I appreciate you. Yeah. Welcome anytime. This was a great stream. 
for, from everybody that participated and um hit the like button share this video through facebook twitter instagram you name it so dennis thurman is headed to colorado but the good news is when this next head coach of jackson state is hired we'll start to see a new team formed some similar players but i'm excited jsu you got a lot to look forward to if you think this jsu team is not going to be good next year i don't know what to tell you there's going to be talent there and any team on their schedule has to deal with them this is raw truth media giving you the raw content that you deservedly need please like share this video have a blessed day and i'm out